Cosas que la que más hace.
अनंगमदने अनंगमदनाथुरे अनंगरेखे अनंगवेगिनी अनंगांगुशे अनंगमालिनी सर्वसंक्षोभन चक्रस्वामिनी क्षोभन भक्नालाद्वा सर्वसंक्षोभन चक्रस्वामिनी गुप्ततरयोगिनी Probably we can do the fourth hour and also if possible I will give you the introduction of the fourth hour. <coughs> Second hour was Sarvasa Paripuraka Chakraswa. Chakra that we all saw last week that it denoted Swapna Avastha and Sukshma Deha. Svapna avastha and sukshma devaka. Mind is, indriyas are subdued but mind is still active. That's why mind takes on to the sukshma deha and it comes out, your experiences come out as dreams. It's also like, you know, we mentioned last week, like in the Jagrat Avastha, we undergo the results of our Prarabdha Karma. The residual karmas are experienced in dreams. Residual karmas, because it feels like, you know, so many dreams that we are living, we are experiencing it. There are so many dreams that come to us. Really, we can see that suddenly when you wake up only, we realize that it is a dream. So, that is also a way of going through your karma. So the residual karma gets experienced, the results of the residual karma gets experienced in the dreams. But it's a blessing because you are only dreaming and you are experiencing the karma. You are not practically experiencing it in front of you. When you go to a guru, be it Krishna, be it Shiva, be it Ambal, whoever it is. We all want some remedy from what? Our sorrows, mainly our sorrows. Whatever we go through, every one of us go through, no one is exempted from this. We all can think that that person is much more happier than him. You sit and talk to him. Then you will know how blessed you are. So that way, we all think everyone, it's not only us who go through the problems. Everyone goes through. Because everybody has come with the baggage. They have to go through the baggage. Whatever they have to carry, they have to only undergo that. When you pray to Guru or when you pray to these gods and goddesses, you have to undergo your karma. They can make you undergo your karma in your dreams. That is the difference. Nobody can intervene with the karmic law. Rubber Buddha, you cannot erase it. You cannot erase your karmas. But they will make you go through it at the time when it is very convenient for you. There is no, you, when you, after you have gone through it, you realize that there is no oh, much more appropriate time to have gone through something which you have gone through. But you have to undergo that. You cannot escape. And then Namak Sauriamana or Samayatila, you are. That's the other one. Karma, that's the one Guru. One Guru, one Bahaman, one Bahaman, one Guru, 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 one
Guru, why we talk so high about Guru? No? Guru only can take you to that level. Nobody else can do it. Such is the greatness of a Guru. So when you go through your karmas in your dreams, it doesn't, I mean, okay, when you are dreaming, you feel that you are going through it, but when you are awake, you are back into your routine. It is not beyond that. Right? So, that is, but you have experienced your karma. You are undergoing something that has happened that you have to undergo that in a very lighter way you are meant to undergo it during the dreams. So, Sarvasha Paripura Kachaka. So, all your karmas, be it in reality or in dreams, it gets completely gone. By the time you come to the second avarna. That is what is important. The karmas get completely annihilated. Randhavada avarna the sarvasha paripura. Ellam paripurana maatthana karma viyam adhagi karna. Our karmas are so strong, it is still attached to karna. It is in the condensed form in karna deva. That is there. That takes, because... Condensed, the more condensed it is, it's very difficult to remove them. Yeah. Even in our vessels or in the cloth, when the dark, that thing is so thick, it takes some time to <laughs> scrub and remove it. So from karma dehim to remove the karma, the process goes on. Cleansing process goes on to the next, this thing, next hour. Asha means desires, you call it as desires. Our uh, desires are based on our karma. That is how we look at it. Our desires, whatever we desire, it is based on our karma. Something what we have enjoyed or what we have not enjoyed, that can come under both. But you can still desire for that. The problem of getting into a karma is the base is the desire. Base is the desire for getting into the karma. It is only when you want something, the problem starts. It is only when you want something, the problem starts. So the desire becomes, that is why sarvasa paripura. The root cause of the karma is a desire that gets completely cleansed in this. Because in the fourth avarana when you come, the third hour now we are going to so fourth hour now when you come, the chintane, the Ishwara chintane comes in the sadhaka. So the cleansing of the karma state place now. The third hour now we are entering is mainly to get rid of non-essential ego. Essential ego is very, very important for our existence because that gives us the identity that who we are. That is essential ego. What is non-essential ego? Nothing but pride. Self-boasting. Someone else praising you is different. You praising yourself means something else. There is some problem with you. <laughs> no? <laughs> this is that is the thing. See, they have given one full avarna for, for all the karmas. They have given two, that is understandable, two avarnas. They have to go through because our baggage is big. But comparatively for only that ego, only that pride, they have given one full avarna for that. We are entering now to get it cleansed. <laughs> Ananga Kusume, this is the third avarana, Sarva Samchobhana Chakra, it is called. Last avarana, we told it was Gupta Yogini. Gupta means secret, concealed. Because it is a dream state, yoginis are also in the concealed form. Gupta Thara is comparative degree. It is more secretive aspect of that. 
more secretive, comparative one more secretive, more secretive, more than the secretive, this is more secretive. Why are you talking Because Sushupthi Abdingra Avastha we are talking here. Deep sleep, Sushupthi Avastha Abdingra we are talking in the third one. That time there is no realization of ourselves. We don't know whether we are alive or dead. We are like that sleeping. No? <laughs> Deep sleep. Because dreams are also gone now. After dreams are gone, mind wants to get into the dreamless state. When the dreams are completely that fulfills all your desires, the mind is so contented with that, it wants to get into the dreamless state to enjoy the bliss. Ananda Melkanda, dreamless state. Ananda Melkanda, dreamless state. Ananda Melkanda, what is this? This is the Avarana Pratishtuvi. Chinna Ananda, it's not a big bliss. Little, till the time we wake up, that Ananda continues. So the yoginis here are called Gupta Thara yoginis. Chakreshwari is Tripura Sundari Chakreshwari. Siddhi here is Mahima Siddhi. Mudra Shakti is Sarva Karshini Mudra Shakti. Mudra Shakti is Sarva Karshini Mudra Shakti. Sarva Karshini Mudra Shakti. For everything we saw Bija. First Bija, we saw Lam. Prathvi Bija. Next Bija, Sam. This Bija is Ham. Ham is the Bija of Ishvara, Shiva. Ham. Nam Hreem Abdeen Nachalabhuda. I have told about Ham. Ham Garvi Ishvara Bija. Shiva. This is called Ham Rudra Varacha Enna Varam Shiva Bija Varamodha. Samharam Garakramodha. Srishti. Rendavada Sthithina Varadhi. The Samharam. Abdeen. Samhara Pralayam. Pralayam is Samhara Pralayam. Because Sushupthi, we call it as Nitya Pranayam. Sushupthi, we call it as Nitya Pranayam. Why do we call it Nitya Pranayam? Because we don't understand. Our Sukshma Deham is also sleeping. Our Gross Deham is also sleeping. Only Karana Deham is... Pranayam Samayitra, only Karana Deham is present. Pranayam Samayitra, only Karana Deham is present. That is also in the subdued state attached to the Brahma. When the creation has to happen, then the, this one gets up. Karana Deham gets up, but only at that time. Okay? So, this is called Nitya Pralayam because awareness of one's own self is absent here completely. Consciousness. Nanda Karvi Tiriyad. Adichi Potamla Tumarabhi. Whether we are sleeping in our house or in somebody else's house, also we do. And then, Smithya Pranayam, it is completely the body consciousness, body consciousness is completely absent. Not body is absent. Body is present there. We are not aware of it. Okay? Body consciousness is completely absent. That is when I told you last week that we attract the cosmic energy from above. We attract the, we take it in the cosmic energy, it, which it rejuvenates us to start the new day. Right? So this is, that is the reason this or even the Sukshma Deham Gupta Yogini, Gupta Thara Yogini means even more secretive than the Gupta Devani, so it, they are Gupta Thara Yoginis. All the eight Devatas in this, eight Devatas are in this Avarana and they are called Gupta Thara Yoginis. The triad of 
மான மாத்ரு மேயர் நான் இது நிறைய சொல்லிட்டேன் மான மீன்ஸ் நாலேஜ் மாத்ரு மீன்ஸ் த சீக்கர் ஆஃப் த நாலேஜ் அண்ட் மேயம் மீன்ஸ் த ஒன் டு பி நோன் த்ரூ த நாலேஜ் த ட்ரையட் த சீக்கர் த நாலேஜ் டு சீக் அண்ட் வாட் இஸ் சாட் ஃபார் Mathru means the one who is, who wants to know, the knower, he, seeker. Mana means the knowledge itself. You need some knowledge to do what you, so the knowledge is mana. Maya means what is sought for, what is to be known. Maya na Bhagavan matuna na chika. மாத்ரோன நாம மேயன பகவான் எதன் மூலமா பகவான அடையலாம் அது மான மாத்ரு இதுல வி ஆர் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் டெட் இங்க படுத்துருக்கோம் சுசுக்தி ஸ்டேட் டீப் ஸ்லீப் வி ஆர் நாட் அவேர் ஆஃப் ஆர் செல்ஸ் சோ மாத்ரு இஸ் கம்ப்ளீட்லி இன் அ ஸ்லீப்பிங் ஸ்டேட் so when matru is sleeping state it doesn't have the mind or intellect to think so the manam is also in the sleeping state the knowledge is also sleeping there is no knowledge but the conscious the bhagavan is present may is present so no may is also awareness is not there may is present may awareness this body no body is there body awareness only is not there the body is there knowledge is absent because body is in a deep sleep state that time the awareness of the mayam is also not there bhagavan pati kuda chintana pavaradu kada it's absolutely in a sleep so the presence of body only is there updated the the predominant aspect of matru is predominant here matru is predominant here because body is because the body is present physically that body is present whereas body is in no state of the knowledge or the realization of the brain so you you can say it is predominant in this state matru is predominant in this state so it is more like you know as i told you body is present but body consciousness is absent absence of body consciousness in this state so this sushupti avastha the jeevan is called pranyan in jagrat avastha he was called vishvan and in dream state he was called taijasan and in the sushupthi state he is called pranyan when indriyas are subdued the mind is subdued what is left is only the bliss the ananda the soul nam paatha first jagrat avastha ya annamaya kosama irk the five sheets we call it first outer outer sheet is annamaya kosam the second in the dream state we have pranamaya manomaya and vinyanamaya the three sheets are there inside but in this sushupti state it is only anandam because all your karmas are over you are not undergoing anything in the deep sleep state you are not even aware of yourself to undergo something so you are completely cut off from all your karmas when all your karmas are cut off what remains is only bliss ananda mattum da irukku ang dukham gar vaarthe kade dukham innaval is over with the dream so there is no dukha it is only bliss surrounding the karna sarira now these deities these devis eight devis i told are in this avarna and they are worshiped in the clockwise direction this is also eight petal lotuses last time 16 petals lotus petals this one is eight lotus petals corner the triangles are not yet started it is starting from the fourth avarna this is 
eight lotus petals. The how it is worshipped is, as I told you, it is anti-clockwise. Normally we start from the western side because eastern side is opposite you. You are facing the east. If you think like you are facing the east, then the you have to start from the western side. But this one we start from the eastern side. Just opposite the petal that is away from you. So that is, if you take it as number one, one alternate petals, one, three, five, seven, and then two, four, six, eight. It is puja is done like that. Two. So you can you can just imagine two uh, clockwise rounds. The bindu is taking two clockwise rounds. So one, three, five, seven, and two, four, six, eight. How they are worshipped like that. This is clockwise. Now, the previous one is anti-clockwise. This is clockwise. Second avarana is anti-clockwise. This is clockwise. Okay? You must have, you must remember now if you have heard Lita's Asnama about Puryashtaka. You know where the Puryashtakam came? During the... When I explained, I will tell you when I explained Puryashtakam in Lalita Sasnama. During the Bandhasuravatam, that Vigna Yantra, they just put it in the, in the fortress, inside the fortress and all the Issue. I mean, the Shakti Sena is just in the state of uh, Tamas state. That time, this is when I told you that Kameshwara is always present in the Sri Chakra, that uh, Chakra Rajam, or Ambar's Ratham is called Chakra Rajam. So, these two are sitting there. Kameshwara is just as a witness, he is sitting. He is not participating in the war. It is only Ambal who is doing the war. Kameshwara is just sitting there because they cannot be separated. So that time, Ambal knows what has happened. So she, she looks at Kameshwara. Both of them smile at one another because they know exactly what had happened because that Vigna Yantra has they have the Rakshasas have thrown the Vignayantra into the fortress of the Shaktis. That is the reason all the Shakti Sena, the entire Shakti Sena is in the state of Tamas, lethargic, not wanting to war, not wanting to fight the war. Battle, not the war, it is the battle. So that time came Vignesha, Ganesha. Kameshwara Mukha Loka Kalpita Shri Ganeshwara Maha Ganesha Nirbhinna Vigna Yantra And the Vigna Yantra Yedikartaka Ganeshwara Who is called a Ganeshwara? The one who has won over the Puryashtakam. What is Puryashtakam? Ashtakam means you know eight things. There are eight copper, eight things are listed, but each one has got a lo lot of components in that. Eight things is karma indriyas, jnana indriyas, antakarana. Five pranas, prana apana. Five pranas, five cosmic elements. So, five cosmic elements, five pranas. Karmendriya, Yanendriya, 20, it is over. Antakarana, 4, 24. Other than that, desire, ignorance, and karma. Karma, we go down. Vinayaka, Ganesha. So, the whole thing, if you say so, 27 components are in that. Karmendriya, 5, Yanendriya, 5, Panchaprana, 5. And Pancha Bodham 5, 
5 cosmic elements 20, Antakarana 4, 24, Desire, Ignorance and Karma 3, 27. Idoda Ishwara Bhavam on the Serubo, the 28 are the Maha Ganesh Road, a Mula Mantram has got 28 Bijakshara. That is how the 28 Bijams have come from Maha Ganesh Mula Mantra. This is called Puriyashtakam. But what is These shaktis are in the form of sukshma puryashtaka. Very, very subtle. This is something that we all know, we all go through our karma is there. Now the karma is gone, no. Last two avarnas, our karmas are gone. So karmas you cannot now bring it in. So now the sukshma puryashtaka also has got all this. This eight, the same 28, 27 comes. It doesn't, Puryashtaka, 27 components are there. You have got Panchatanmatras, all subtle. You don't see that like, you know, 10 Indriyas, Karmendriya, Jnanendriya, Panchatanmatras, subtle aspects. Ahankara, Ahankara is again subtle. Anthakarana, Ahankara is given Separate Amtakaranam, there is also Ahankaram is there. Mind, intellect, consciousness and ego. Lean. Manasa, buddhi, chitta, Ahankaram. Abdina, Anga, or Ahankaram, or Amtakaranam, or Ahankaram. But Inga, Inu, Ahankaram is separately mentioned. That is what is called non essential ego. <laughs> Pride. That is the essential ego. The identity gives you an identity. Essential ego gives you an identity. But this ahankara is not essential ego. So in the yetta devigalakum yenna velala, prakriti od aspect la unnirk. Mahat philosophy lo chalma. Mahat philosophy is Mahat nale and the prakriti purusha, that union and the expansion of the universe. It is the Mahat principle. Union happens between Prakriti and Purusha and the creation of this universe happens because of that. Because of that union. That is, that is why it is called Mahatta philosophy. Ahankara, non-essential ego. Panchatanmatras and Panchabhutam, the five cosmic elements, ten Indriyas. Ahankaram, Anthakaranam. Anthakaranam again is for mind, intellect, consciousness and ego. There is, this is essential ego. So these four are Anthakaranam. And the last one is the Purusha. They call it as individual soul. Idhidam and the Sukshma Puryashtakam. Adhipatha Puryashtakam. Stura Puryashtakam. Idhidam and the Sukshma Puryashtakam. This eight devis represents these eight things and they purify our non-essential ego. Nice to say that word again and again. But these eight aspects now we saw, we have to understand the seeker is not a realized soul here. The seeker is a normal person who is undergoing a number of madri. Normal, number deep sleep, it is like that. Normal. He is still, his craving to progress in the spirituality has not come. It is, we are in the third hour. Yawning has not come. So, he is like, you know, but his karmas are cleared. That is the reason. But his ignorance is not. Still, and the Anyanam Gartha Pohale. Anyanam is still there. It is still present. Anyanam is still present. So this eight are there. They help you fight again to purify yourself. But still the sadhaka is immersed in Anyanam. Anyanam Vittu Pohale. Anyanam Varale. Sadhaka Kilo Anyanam Varale. 
Samadhan still has that Anya. And so these eight things are immersed in Anya. Still, it is not clear to go ahead. Okay, it is a step by step purification. That is what I told you in the beginning myself. Shakti Upasana teaches you Advaitam but in sections. It is not take, it doesn't take you to the end immediately. In small sections, small progressions, they make you travel towards that. But the end is the same. End is the Advaita Bhavana. But the progression that you make is in small quarters. Okay? So this one, there, are, there is like, you know, there is another interpretation. This is eight Sukshma Puriyashtakam Visa. There is another, another interpretation about this yoginis, eight yoginis. They are connected in some way to Manmatha. The prefix of each yogini, Ananga Kusuma, Ananga Mekhala, Ananga Madana, Ananga Madhanathura. Ananga means man, man madhan. Ananga, the one who is bodiless. Is Ananga, Ananga na man madhan. Okay? Ananga Kusuma, so the flowers of man madhan. Ananga Mekhala, the waist band, the girdle that he wears, is of man madhan. Ananga Madhana. Madhana means intoxication. It is simple intoxication. The, because Ananga Madhana Thura is addiction. Okay? Ananga Rekhe. Ananga Rekhe is the silhouette because you are not seeing the body, you are seeing the silhouette of the body, outline of the body. That is Ananga Rekha. Ananga Vegini, that urge is there. That urge, that that is there in every one of us. Urge to do something, be it a spiritual urge or material urge, urge is there, present. God, ananga, ananga kusha. So desire has to be the urge when it happens. You have to use the ankusam to control that urge. That is why ananga. Anangha Kusha, Anangha Malini, Garland of Manmada. Why Manmada is given so much importance in this Avrana? Manmada can cause subtle modification in the mind, which is directly linked to the mind of humans. Okay? So that is the reason it can take you in a different path. So to bring it under control, that, that is the reason this urge and hold and guard and all these things, if you see that, it is all creating a kind of physical stimuli. Ananga, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the first one, you Ananga Kusma, the flowers and all these things, these, these are physical stimuli, which has got psychological effects on you. It affects you psychologically. So all these things are guarded here. All these things are protected here. So you don't go vary about, you, you don't change, it doesn't affect your, your spiritual growth. It, you still get focused in one day your growth. Right? That is the reason these eight devis, they represent different aspects of Manmada, different things that he has. There is one more interpretation of these eight babies. Each one represents X. One is ex expression, apprehension, movement, elimination, lust, rejections, attentions, and detachment. These eight things. I'll repeat it expression, apprehension, movement, elimination, lust, rejections, attention, and Detachment. You are detached from everything. Right? Next is Sukshma Purushottam. 
this shakti aspect makes the sadhaka understand different aspects of jagrat swapna and sushupti realization of that but apo mind when it is in a very very equilibrium if a person understands different aspects of jagrat avastha ni eppadi irukka pora dream state la how it is dream state is not in our control but still he understands the aspect of shakti i told you as a witness in all this aspect he understands that even when i am in the jagrat avastha i am doing i am busy doing so many things that one thing called shakti is not shakti that one thing is like brahman is watching you is a witness to all our things so automatically you bring control over even you mean you you were really hesitant if someone is watching you doing something right when nobody is watching you are free to do you we think we are free to do whatever we are we don't have any qualms about admitting it so when someone is watching then you are doubly careful as to how you are going to be illaya appo in the brahmam is present even in the jagrat state in the sleep state in the sapna state and in the deep state that realization comes for the sadhaka in this avarana that is why the ishwari who is a beautiful maiden is called tripura sundari jeevan when there is no trauma or suffering in this our in the state the sushupti state there is no trauma we have done gone through enough with jagrat and swapna we are at peace now jeevan is in his own bliss he has not realized that the bliss is the being with the brahman is the eternal bliss but he is in his own bliss oh, very happy we had a very good sleep we cannot like that no like so deep so what they say that yogini hridayam explains it so well in this bhogya bhotra bhotra roopa pravrthaya sanchanita shrama nivrutti purvaka sahajananda vaapti bhogya bhotru enjoy and the enjoyment bog bhotru means the one who is enjoying bhogya means the enjoyment itself that whatever that comes that the because in the jagrat state only you have the you are consciously enjoying in the dream sleep you don't have any awareness about what you are enjoying but in the jagrat avastha you are consciously you are experiencing it so this bhotru is present the enjoyer is present and the enjoyment is also there so that whatever that that things that uh, come with this bhogya bhotru enjoy and enjoyment is absent here because we don't have a thing to enjoy now we are in a deep sleep state so that is because it is completely absent sahajananda vaapti in what comes vaapti means what you get sahajan natural bliss you are enjoying sahajanand it is not induced it is not it that bliss that you have experience you experience after realizing the bliss it is not that bliss but the bliss is there because you don't have the first two aspect bhogyam and bhotru the enjoy and that differentiation after it vanishes it is only the bliss sahajananda okay saiva saundar saundarya kyo guna avlod roopam eppadi irukku guna eppadi irukana it is only beauty that is the reason tena samyuta tripura sundari chakreshwari why she is called chakreshwari is called tripura sundari she eliminates this enjoyer and enjoyment and gives you the bliss the three aspects of that 
that bliss even for a short while without you being aware that you are enjoying the bliss you just go through the bliss that she gives and because of her characteristics of being so beautiful she is called tripura sundari so the sarpa kashini mudra also denotes one thing what akarshan of what you are the bliss is you are receiving the bliss that is the that is the thing that you want you want in entirety so sarpa kashini mudra is used only for that the knowledge is in the pure condensed state here it is not because as i told you knowledge is also absent what is to be known is also absent only the knower is present in this state that is the reason it is it is not exhibited it is in the condensed state because knower is in a deep sleep state he doesn't know what he is like you know knowledge is present but it is not exhibited you have to understand knowledge is present because the because he is there he is alive because he is in a deep sleep state knowledge is in the pure condensed form which is represented by mahima siddhi okay now we will come to bhavana upanishad vachana dhana ghamana visarghanand hano phadano pekshakhe बुद्ध्यो अनंग कुसुमादि शक्तयो अष्टौ वचन स्पीच द एट थिंग्स सी भवन ऑफ पिनशत इज समथिंग दैट यू एट्रिब्यूट ईच आवरण टू योर ओन सेल्फ भवन ऑफ पिनशत भावने न न न तो एट्रिब्यूट हाउ यू एट्रिब्यूट टू योर सेल्फ भावने sentiment bhavana so you just attribute the chakra on yourself okay in this whatever we do are considered as eight aspects of this shaktis that is what they say vachana speech adhana adhana means grasping grasping what is being told what we talk what we grasp what is being told okay rend ghamana ghamana means movement motion visarga visarga means evacuation clearing up ananda ananda is generating happiness hana the attitude of rejection attitude of rejection upadhana upadhana means acceptance namlana mudile vandadukapra you start accepting whatever is there it's only when you give up when you really give up in life you start at, we don't do we don't accept in the beginning itself illaya alla namak namlana adu onnu mudiyadennu seri ennamo aatta like anything and we just give up that is where you start accepting things we don't do the acceptance before we accept so after the atti- attitudes of rejection comes and then the acceptance happens upaksha upaksha means apati when when you have gone through yourself when you are able to understand when someone else goes through the same thing. empathize with them no you empathize with someone no? when they go through what you have gone through already that apathy comes automatically right so this is these are all the eight things that exist these are all the characteristics eight things that exist in us this eight devis represent only those eight so cleansing of the mind gets completed we say last in the previous avarna whatever rest of the mind is something that is very hard to clean you cannot call any deep cleaning agency to do that <laughs> mind is something that is very hard to clean this avarna 
Because, why it is because of the non-essential ego? I love saying this word. <laughs> non-essential ego, the pride. Pride we all have. Itthana illa srishti panila na variety. You can't even comprehend the variety that the universe cosmos has. Bhagavan is not having that pride. <laughs> we can't even move our little finger now. What we achieve? Can we achieve anything? Nothing. But still, even if a minuscule of a thing we have done it, the kind of pride and boasting that we have is immeasurable. See, the organs that we have inside our body is placed in such a way, compactly it is placed in this, say, five feet odd inches. It's also compact. Can you imagine when the surgeon does a job, he is not able to again fit it into the same way that he has done it? The nerves will be somewhere, like you know, the veins will be somewhere. There is some, because he is opening it and taking it out, no? Or correcting it. He cannot place it in the same order, but how he opened it, no? See the greatness of Bhagavan. That is the greatness. But here we do small, small things. And we take so much of pride about all. This is not necessary. That is why it comes into the category of non-essential. The pride that you have. People who are self-realized, they don't declare themselves as, I am a self realized There's no, like, you know, we have in the front of the house, we have a name book. I am a self-realized soul. We don't have a locket like that hanging around our neck. When they call themselves like that, we know what they are. Because Kali Yugam, Kali Yodhila, you see only this, people boasting. No? Nanda Perihan, Atta Soli Yugam must I am bigger than you. Whatever it is, how big we are, we don't know. But the one who is really realized, sits in one corner and he just does his job. Ramana Maharishi They don't go on telling everybody that I am a realized soul. Their presence is enough to make you realize that they are realized souls. They are sitting in one corner, not even talking, not even opening their mouth. By being in their presence, we realize that they are realized souls. They give that kind of an aura that they have. That kind of an atmosphere they create. In their presence, we all realize that they are realized souls. You don't need to, they don't need to spell it out. That is what is happening. The Kali Yuga Dharma. We call it Kali Yuga Dharma. Kali. Kali Yuga Dharma. Dharma Kali Yuga Dharma is something that everybody boasts. So, the whatever the traces of this pride is there in you. Because with pride, only when you are submissive, you can move on. Only when you submit yourself completely, you move on. When the pride is there, you cannot take the next step. You are pushed back again. Jagratavastha. Get back. Wake up from your deep sleep. You have enjoyed enough. Go and cleanse yourself again. Because by being, you, you attract more karmas. Because by being pride, so you get back. Snakes and ladders, Madri, you know, just keep moving on. Suddenly one snake will come, you come to the bottom, bottom most. No? It's exactly like that. The pride brings you back from where you started. So this Havarana purifies that pride. Because with that pride you cannot progress. So the pride has to get purified. The pride is purified in this hour. You have to understand that. Pride is purified in this avarnas. 
the desires attachment are completely removed by this eight yoginis devis and so there is a kind of detachment the sadhaka develops because he is fed up with going through the trauma he says that ulaha vaikena edha karyam panna adu oru result there is one karana there is a karyam and there is a result in that and again that result becomes the reason for you to do things right this is a cycle vicious cycle so that thing is breaks here this so the sadhaka over a period of time he has gone through again and again the same thing he feels that i am just fed up with this when i am going to get out of it and look at it from a different angle if i am in this cycle i cannot i will be here only i will not get out the moment i get out i see a different world the small little bliss that he experiences in the sushupti avastha makes him realize makes him yearn for the bliss which is yet another right this is this eight devis who are purifying ourselves the last bit of the traces of that ego that we that are attached to our ourselves okay fourth avarna i will say and you can repeat it okay we will see if it is an hour then we will start the fourth avarna next week i don't want to rush because this is a very difficult subject as we are dealing with both the gross part of the shri chakram as well as the subtle aspect that bhavana upanishad we have to just go and go through it mentally then experience a bhavana upanishad is all about that you have to go through it shri chakram is not it just reminds you that shri chakram is not outside anywhere it is within you it is within you and you carry the shri chakram with you shri chakram is not just a piece of plate or a piece of metal it is us it is the cleansing project from how you clean cleans yourself okay now you repeat that uh, because next week i don't want to again take time to repeat the fourth avarna devadi deva devatas we will uh, just repeat that and we will wind up the session now okay chaturth avarna sarva samshobini sarva vidravini sarva karshini sarva haladini sarva sammohini sarva stambhini sarva jrumbini sarva vashankari sarva ranjani sarvon madini sarvartha sadihe sarva sampatti poorini sarva mantramayi sarva dvandva chayankari sarva saubhagya dayaka chakra swamini sarva saubhagya dayaka chakra swamini sampradhaya yogini so all these things after the cleansing gets over we are just this is the nucleus of the shri chakra the because the triangles from here the uh, triangles avarna each avarna consists of triangles i have told before like when i was explaining about the shri chakra in previous in one of the sessions there are nine triangles in all
몰라요 지금 So there are nine triangles in all. Sri Chakra Thrunida, this nucleus of the Sri Chakra. Four are upwards facing triangles and five are downwards facing triangles. These nine triangles intersect, the four upward facing, uh, facing triangles are called Shiva triangles and five downwards facing triangles are called Shakti triangles. These nine intersect one another to form 43 triangles and five avaranas. Bindu is also considered as avarana and it is also considered as a triangle so in all 44 triangles, six avaranas. The next six avaranas excepting the Bindu, we have next five avaranas excepting the Bindu, we have triangles and this is the first avarana of the triangle. Once the cleansing is done, you go forward. This is what the fourth avarna denotes, where like you know the thought of the Brahma, the way that you want to like you know the different aspects of the Brahma. Some some people the, I will I will uh, explain to you from the Brahma Sutra next week as how Akasha Bhavam is there. We all think the pranam that we have, that is the Brahma. Some people look at it as light. Some people, like you know, everybody has got a bhavam towards how the what the Brahma is. There is no so any specific way because Brahma is nothing, nothing of all these things. Brahma is nothing of all these things, but our own perception about Brahma can differ. So there are 14 ways of Brahma Sutra explains there are 14 ways of looking at it, looking at the Brahma from different perception, different perspectives, as Akasham as like, uh, uh, as I tell, as pra prana, as tejo mayama, different bhavam is there. So that bhavam are represented by 14, because this fourth avarana consists of 14 triangles avarana, and again this is anti-clockwise. This next five avarnas are in anti-clockwise. Okay. Next to five avarnas, as I told you, first Bindu is in the center. It, when it starts moving, first it goes one small anti-clockwise and one small anti-clockwise and one clockwise. Because the ayudam that comes in the seventh avarna is it comes after the seventh avarna, it comes clockwise. Eighth avarna is Vasinyadi Devadas. So before that, I mean uh, seventh avarna is Vasinyadi Devadas, eighth avarna is the three shaktis. Kameshwari, Vajreshwari and Mahamalini and before that, between the 7th and 8th Avarana, you have the Ayudam. Ayudam come as clockwise. First, the, the three Devis come as anti-clockwise, Ayudam come as clockwise and next four Avaranas are anti-clockwise. So, 7, 6, uh, 5 and 4, these four Avaranas are anti-clockwise. So, next Avarna, we will see it, uh, it consists of 14 triangles, just as an introduction I am saying, that it consists of 14 triangles and the Chintane, the Brahma Chintane starts happening here. When the Brahma Chintane happens, how the Guru appears. At the end of this Avarna, the Guru appears. This is what the fourth, four, fourth Avarna is about, which we will see next week, because it is, it is plenty, because we have got a lot of uh, Brahma Sutram is there, Yogini Hridayam is there, Bhavana Upanishad is there. Three big uh, things and I don't want to confuse with a lot of information this week. Okay? Guru Pyarama.